Hey folks, this is Abel James, and thanks so much for tuning in to Fat Burning Man, where we help you look, feel, and perform at your best. You may already know this, but I'm not a big fan of gyms. They can be stinky and soulless, but our guest today is changing the game by making exercise fun again. He created a thriving business by reimagining the gym as a place where friends help friends become better people. And he does that in a very particular and fun way. You'd never know it by looking at him now, but Kenny Stanford, co-founder of Grit Fitness, used to be a couch potato. Kenny's going to tell us all about how he started his fitness business on a shoestring budget with his friends and how the wild diet changed his life, especially the dessert parties, and how you can do things you never thought you'd be able to do. Now, before we get to the show, Every year without fail, someone on TV says that you better stick to skinless turkey breasts out of Tupperware if you don't want to pack on pounds during the holiday season. Control your portions, avoid delicious treats, eat low-fat gravy products, they nag. We promise ourselves to be disciplined this year and vow to dodge all the desserts. Then we drink a couple cocktails, polish off the pumpkin pie, and feel guilty and fat for the rest of the month. Why does it have to be this way? Why do we overeat during the holidays? Mostly, it's because we just eat what's around us and the get-togethers and celebrations make avoiding sweets a Herculean task. On top of that, when family is close, drama is not far behind and suddenly that jug of eggnog looks like a worthy friend to snuggle up with next to the fire. And, you know, I enjoy that too. Truth be told. But remember, you always have a choice. You always have 100% free agency over every morsel of food that crosses your lips. If you don't enjoy the heck out of what you're eating, there's not usually a point in choking it down, especially if it's not good for you. So as we head into another holiday season, filled with dessert tables and Aunt Edna's many years old fruitcake, here are a few tips to help you stay lean. Focus on being full or pursuing the state of fullness. Not too full, but just not worrying about food anymore. Not being hungry anymore. During the big meals, here's one thing you can do. Focus on eating to get full but not stuffed. You don't need to be counting calories or analyzing the ingredients, but just chill out, load up your plate with 80 to 90 percent veggies and with a bit of protein in there too, foods that will satisfy you, and then maybe save like 10 or 20, 15 percent for the fun stuff, the desserts and the, the sweeter things. But if you fill up on the veggies, and the proteins, this is something that I do pretty much for every big meal like Thanksgiving and the holidays. If you load up on those things first, you don't go hog wild on the desserts most of the time. You can just have a few bites or have a little bit and you'll be totally cool. Another thing you can do, know your trigger foods. Acknowledge which foods might trigger a binge episode and then eat something else instead. Plan to indulge, but not to the point of sickness. Eat your favorite foods, but dedicate yourself to enjoying the process, not fearing what might happen. Plan to eat a cookie or two, savor them, and then move on. Planning ahead eliminates anxiety, reduces guilt, and allows for balanced eating and drinking, which is really what this is all about. You can do almost anything if you do it in a balanced way, and you won't be hurting yourself if you have a little bit of beer, wine, or uh, food that isn't 100% optimal all the time. Do the best you can. Another thing you can do, separate your emotions from food. The holidays are always stressful. Don't use food to cope. In your plan for the holidays, figure out what you're going to do when someone tweaks you out. Finally, make your own treats and bring them to share with friends and family if there aren't usually healthier options around there. I'll tell you what, if you know how to make the right set of cookies, the right kind of pancakes, or even the right kind of pizza with real food, your friends and family will like it. It's uh, not that difficult to make great ingredients taste great as well. You don't have to do much to them when you're starting out with great raw ingredients. So that's one of the core, core parts of our plan for all of the holidays. But just instead of buying that terrible kind of depressing store-bought pie that's full of corn syrup, GMOs, modern wheat, and all this other junk, try making one of the dessert recipes uh, from our website at fatburningman.com. Totally free. There are a ton of recipes right there. We have pies, cookies, brownies, and even my favorite, cheesecake. But if you're looking for even more holiday recipes with everything planned out for you with, with beautiful full color spreads, check out the Fat Burning Chef cookbook and you'll get my Wild Holiday Feasts ebook for free. All you have to do there is go to Fat Burning Chef 
fatburningchef.com from any device. Just type in fatburningchef.com. Or if you'd like to shop around and, and check out our cooking class, our online community with seasonal meal plans called the Fat Burning Tribe, then just go to fatburningman.com. There's a little shop where you can find all of our programs. In any case, we hope that you enjoy some hearty feasts this year. You deserve it. All right, on to the show with Kenny. You're about to learn why passion is more important than credentials, how looking at the future can help you make healthier choices now, how to eat clean when you're on the road, what to eat to prepare for a huge competition, massive race, or something else that's coming up in your life, and much more. Let's go hang out with Kenny. All right, folks, I am honored to be here once again with Kenny Stanford of Grit Fitness. And you may remember him from an earlier episode of this podcast when he was building up his business based kind of around a lot of the principles of the wild diet and then uh, moving that forward to now. The business is thriving. There's a lot to catch up on. And I'm super proud of you, Kenny. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you've been up to? And, and also, thank you so much for coming back on the show, man. Let me start by saying that I own a small gym in West Columbia, Texas. We got 1,800 square feet. We run about 160 members. Um, it, it fluctuates, right? We lose a few, we gain a few. I try to keep as many as I can. So mm-hmm. I started it with $5,000 on a credit card. We went up to uh, you know the fitness equipment place and we got as much stuff as we kid, could and we maxed out my credit card, $5,000. And we had that, we kind of had like a built-in member base. And I looked at the numbers and I said, okay, with rent, and uh, paying the electricity mm-hmm. and paying for this equipment on the credit card that here's how many this many members this is kind of and i was looking into the future i was like i want to set the prices to where if this thing does grow some that i don't have to bump the prices up um, i want it to be fair so yeah. i looked at all the pricing in the market and i set my prices and a lot of people were like hey that's too expensive because we were charging uh, quite a bit more than what my sister-in-law was charging. But I was like, hey, look, if we're gonna grow this thing and if it's Mm -hmm. ever gonna be anything that people are proud of and wanna be a part of, I have to charge a fair price. Um, And it's funny because the people, some of the people that complained, they they had issues with it, but they kept coming. And then, you know, they saw that we were gonna put, to match that value or exceed it. I try to exceed uh, the value of what they pay. And so, it's a different business model. Most gyms are built on, they know that 90% plus of people will never come or will come once or twice and they just, you know, buy a bunch of, bunch of fancy equipment that often doesn't do anything but looks fancy so that more people buy gym memberships. You're, you're not doing that. It's different. No. So I've been in that situation and I've been that guy where I sat in a chair with a lady who was, and at the time I was like, what is happening right now? I felt like I was buying a car and she was just trying to sell me a gym membership. Right. And I I already wanted the membership, but there was like 40 pages I had to sign. Right. Um, I think an underwriter came in, they took uh, blood from me and I had to do a urine sample. Um, Obviously I'm joking, (laughs) but it was crazy. It was like, and and not only that, I ended up getting burned on it. I wanted out of the thing Mm -hmm. and in my opinion, it was it was their issue, and I yep. was like, "Hey guys, this is this is what you told me it was, and this is not the case. I want out." Mm-hmm. It it I never got out of it. I had to end up. I paid it off, um, and I didn't. Go, I only used it for I think four months. Yeah, and I ended up paying it out for two years. Jeez. So so how do you not get burnt out on fitness with something like that, right? Yeah, you know, absolutely. And so a lot of the people that come here have very similar stories. Yeah, and so. Back to the beginning when I was making this place, I thought I wanna, I wanna look at it from what do I want in a gym? What do, what is Kenny Stanford? What would I want if if I was going to a gym? I'm not a fitness guru. Um, I'm a regular guy that wants to work out mm-hmm. um, in a safe, clean environment with my friends. Mm-hmm. Like that's literally was like the base model for our gym. I just tried to make every decision based around. What would you want in a gym? How would you want to be treated Mm -hmm. um, as a member of a gym? That's something that we take pride in is if you're not coming here, we have a system um, with our coaches where if you're not here for a week, you are going to get a message, a text, or a phone call Mm -hmm. uh, from one of our coaches saying, hey, why are you not coming? And it's not this uh, guilt thing. It has nothing to do with that. It's like, hey, we care about you. And if there's something going on, we want to know if we can help. Mm -hmm. Or we just need to know if you're not going to be here, you know, we want to know that you're okay. And we only have a handful of people 
who have been like, you know what, I went there for a month and that's just totally not for me. Yeah. Um, it's a very, very small percentage of the people that actually started with us. But that's good too. You, you want, if you're running a gym, you want that percentage. If you're running a business, if you're running anything, you want like me as a musician, I know that it's not for everyone, no matter what style I'm playing. It's like, you just need to make it the thing that you think is best for the world, you know? And, and yes. oftentimes that starts with your pain. That's why I started this show and, and this whole health thing. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, keep, keep on rolling. So we had some initial success because, because of the, I think because of the way that we were cultivating uh, the culture uh, was to be this place where friends come and we, we love fitness, we love being healthy and we wanna encourage anybody and everybody, hey, you can do this. Mm -hmm. My parents actually own a restaurant that I manage. That's one of my jobs. Um, and I was eating sandwiches like every day, yep. healthy sandwiches. Yeah, the with food pyramid, baby. Bread. So, um, and I was doing the best I could. You know what's funny? It's funny. This is hilarious. Uh, my buddy was talking about this yesterday. We actually used to look at Subway as our healthy option. Right. Like, and That's I actually lost a lot of weight. I lost a lot of weight eating Subway. Now, I don't attribute that to anything that Subway does or puts on their food. It was mm -hmm. me restricting my calories. I would eat a sandwich that was, you know, they, they serve six inch and foot long. I was eating yep. a three inch sandwich <laughs> and I was taking off the top bun. Right. I wasn't going to give it well, up. You know, was, that part oh, was oh. smart, taking off the top yeah. bun. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Because that crap isn't even bread. I lived above a Subway for a while and I was nauseous for two years. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. So, yeah, Subway was our health food. We had about 20, 25 members, and it's like they all they all bought it. They all did it, and we had insane results, and the the membership role like skyrocketed, it, like insane. Um, we went from having, like I said, it was between 20 and 40 members to over 100 members in less than a month. Wow. Um, be, and it's be, wow. and it's it's because we started to fill in that gap, like. Yeah, you can work out six days a week and still not get the results you want. Mm -hmm. It's found in nutrition. So, um, wouldn't I mean, you know, right? I think in your book, uh, actually, I know in your book, you actually talk about how, listen, you don't have to work out six days a week. You don't have to work out for an hour when you do work out. Give yourself 10, 15 minutes at a time and just really hit it yeah. and get it knocked out. So what what is your experience as far as fitness goes? I know you you were a marathoner. Would you call yourself that? Uh, I don't know if I would take that on as an identity because I did it so much differently than than other people. Well, let me ask you this. Yeah. What's what's your best marathon time? Best marathon time was somewhere around three hours and twenty minutes, which is not well, amazing, but it was uh, I think in the top like three percent of the Austin Marathon Absolutely. for that particular race. And I um, I knew that if I redlined it, I could have. I was running with a three hour like group for a while, um, but you know my cousin ran I believe and maybe it was two hours and and eighteen minutes. I think that was at Boston. So it's like <laughs> we're never gonna be. It, you may be a fast human, but my dog is way faster than you, yeah. way faster than you'll ever be. You know, and so like being incrementally faster and faster um, is is a fun idea. But at some point, you reach that sweet spot where you're like, I'm having a good time. And so for me, I was mostly running as a as a meditation, as a way to process a lot of things that I was going through at the time, uh, and I loved it for that. And uh, it was also a chance for me to listen to music for like three hours, four hours, just go out for a long hike or a long run. And so like you, you you've set up your your business and your approach to fitness more like play as a social thing. Right. And I, I try to do the same thing with with my life. And uh, fitness is something that makes you feel good. It's a favor to yourself. And I'll tell you what, I've been a musician for like 25 years now playing gigs and uh, it's a weird world, but there is nothing on earth that will make you feel as good. No substance or thing will make you feel as good as you feel right after you work out. After a great workout, when you're just kind of glistening with sweat, all the endorphins are flowing. Uh, that's something that is so worth it. But I'll tell you what, it doesn't take 90 minutes a day or, or three hours a day or four hours or 18 hours or whatever. Um, 
Today, I worked out for seven minutes, including the warm-up and cool-down, which is just like one of the things I wrote a blog post because you have to do it if you want to feel good. You don't want to all the time, but you have to if you want to feel your best later. And uh, as I was saying before, nutrition uh, isn't something that's optional. You know, we can, our inner eight-year-olds can believe that we can be entitled to eat ice cream and potato chips and chocolate chip cookies and all this stuff all the time, or that we have like a a budget that's built into our lives as humans, uh, guaranteed by the culture and society that we live in. But that's all marketing spin and nonsense. And so, yeah, when you start to simplify things down, then it's easier to do them every day and Here it is. And then like another sentence, because I never say it in exactly the same way, but veggies in this order, veggies and some fruit in there too, but fresh foods, a little bit of meat, healthy fats, stay away from toxic oil and sugar for the most part and processed food. And then when it comes to exercise, minutes a day, but you need to break a sweat at a minimum. You need to break a sweat. And then after you do Your work, to some degree, is done. It's about reaching this threshold where your body says, adapt, get stronger, get more fit, right? You want to hit that uh, a few times a week, I would say. But that takes more intensity and discipline than it does just slogging along kind of in cruise mode. That's what you want to avoid. So I think that's where where we actually help a lot of people because you mentioned that it's hard we help people get into a routine Mm -hmm. because we have set class times. That's the way the gym works. It's a set schedule. And I think, I think what, what the people that have found success here, and this is actually, this is grit fitness. This is where all of the magic happens. It's a beautiful Uh, backdrop for those of you who are listening to just audio. (laughs) You're missing out. (laughs) You are. Yeah. So go watch the, go watch the video. So I think, I think we help people get into a routine um, while you don't need to work out an hour every single day, that's what we encourage because we know that it's sometimes it's a lot easier when you just get into that routine. And I, I get it. Sometimes that can be a bad team, bad thing and we need to break routine, but if it's a good habit and you're in a good place, I think that, that we, that's what we want to do. We want to shut down the bad habits in our life and pick up some good habits. So yes. the biggest thing that I've gotten from doing this diet the way that I've chose to do it is the discipline aspect. Mm -hmm. Um, When you take control of something in your life that you've never, ever, ever had control of before, man, you get empowered to like another level where you're like, I remember the first time that I started waking up every day at 5 a.m. to work out. It's it's that feeling again. It's like, I do have control. I can control what I eat. I'm in control. You know, you show up at a kid's birthday party and you're like, well, all they got is cake and pizza. I guess I have to eat it. No, you don't. You really don't. You can, you know, this is this is the comeback that I've come up with. If you break down what the wild diet is and you do it, I think on like the first page of the book is what is the wild diet? You tell us. (laughs) I explain it differently every time, especially these days. But it's nutritional defense. It's like what you should have learned if the world were a good place, about how to be healthy. But since the world is a cesspool of misinformation and uh, you know shady characters who are trying to take your good intentions and then just run them straight to the bank or wherever, often at your expense, uh, I wanted this to be The Wild Diet as a book to be the only thing you would ever need to to navigate the world if you're eating or if you want to be fit or if you want to avoid disease, feel your best, uh, perform at your best, it's good nutritional defense. That's that's what it is. And you don't really need anything else. I simplified it on purpose. If you read my first book, it's uh, an academic review that I wrote at an Ivy League school about evolutionary biology, technology, and the human brain and how all of that relates to music. So it's like... There is a lot of uh, precision, I'll say, in the words that I used uh, to write that book and to create this way of eating. But it's a philosophy, and it's meant to be kind of a lantern that leads you through this crazy world uh, that hopefully will be just as relevant decades from now as it is 
today because I didn't come up with this way of eating. Our ancestors did. This is the way that wild humans are supposed to eat. This is the way of eating that nature intended, which is working. Uh, if you do use technology, it's using technology and science to work with nature, not against it. So philosophically, that's what it's all about. But I would like to ask you, what is the wild diet? Well, so my answer is when people ask me because I, I wanted something that I could just spit out and it's, mm -hmm. and it's simple because that's what the wild diet is. It's simple. Mm -hmm. um, I just give them the definition, like the actual definition of Good. the wild. And I let them know, hey, wild meaning not processed junk. It came mm -hmm. from the earth and it's good for you. And then diet just meaning the way that you eat. So if, if you can get on board with that's a good thing and that's for everybody, then the wild diet is absolutely for everybody. It's funny because I can tell who has read the book and who hasn't because the ones that have read the book, instead of saying, yeah, well, it's not for everybody or what about this? Mm -hmm. Instead, they come to me and they say, thank you so much for introducing oh, us that's cool. to this. We've lost 10 pounds. We've lost 20 pounds. Yeah. We sleep better. We feel better. Yeah, it's it's got to be one of the only diet books ever that starts off just crapping all over diet books. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 a, I love it. it's a little bit of a joke, and there are lots of hidden jokes in there that will also be funny later. So, yeah, I would much rather write one book about diet ever and have people go super deep into it because that's the way that I wrote it. I put a lot of intention into it than, you know, churn out a new diet book every day year or so because that's why we're in the problems that's that's why we have the problems that we have right now that's why we're in this situation where everyone's confused because there's all of this stuff out there billions of uh, results for for diets of all different kinds and 95 percent of them are absolute garbage and baloney and uh, i wanted this to be kind of a joke like obviously my publisher wanted me to call it the wild diet but as soon as you open it up you realize that this is not a diet book. This is a lifestyle. This is a philosophy. And this is something that you can do for the rest of your life. It's not like you're following me or the wild diet as, as a, you know, trademarked thing. It's like you're practicing freedom. <laughs> and this is yes. our own little space where the word, I chose the word, word wild very intentionally because the word nature has been trashed. There are a lot of connotations there, but wild and, and wild has its own problems, but at least it's something that's supposed to represent, you know, uh, the, the innate power of, of nature, the innate power of the unknown in a lot of ways. And I think it's combining the the unknown and giving a good nod to that with everything that we know, the best of what we know uh, of science and technology. And that's how we can get through all of this because it's only getting crazier and uh, and it's happening fast. So I think what you're doing, building uh, the social aspect into fitness and health for people is what uh, really gets the majority of people to stick with it because it's hard to do it on your own. I'm I'm a little bit of a freak and I've been a, you know a, a performer for a long time. So I am almost always in a different place. It's hard to have a a place where I go regularly these days. I can kind of do it on my own, but I've I've learned over the years that if you if you want to commit to something and get a lot better, there's almost no other way of doing it than to do it with somebody else now it could just be a mentor you know it could be uh, uh, someone who is close to you who's guiding you who knows a little bit more but even better if you can go to a place where you show up a few times a week and you get to play with your friends that's what we need and, and you know we talked about that a lot the last time you were on the show recess for adults right just get yeah. we don't even take breaks anymore we don't take vacations we don't take breaks we're working all the time even though we hate our jobs it doesn't make any sense you know let's be humans again yeah so that uh i kind of want to dive back into something that you were talking about um and something that i had mentioned earlier is how do you view so i want to hear from the man right you wrote the book you gave us the information what does your diet look like and how do you view what's your perspective on cheat meals I know how you lay it out in the book, yeah. and again, you're all about freedom, so you give you, you left it open enough to where people could make their own decisions. Mm -hmm. The way that I read it, because I've read it several times, on, well, what is the cheat meal for me, right? So the way that I've looked at it this year, and that my perspective is, 
I don't want to put anything in my body that contradict contradicts my values yeah. and what I believe is good for me. I don't want to purposely put just because I like it. So I just want to hear your take on it. What do you, cause I'm sure you cheat. What do you, what do you cheat with and where do you draw the line? Yeah. Well, if you read the book in my work closely, I say free meals are something that, that can help and you can have them. Um, and you'd be surprised what you can get away with, especially if you're younger or you're physically active, that sort of thing. Um, and when I was younger and more physically active and, and uh, was trying to bulk up, for example, man, I needed some of those free meals. But I'll say this. When I first started, I wanted to see if I could get away with eating junk and i i could i noticed that you know if i was eating cereal with milk versus and this is while i was running a lot uh versus a, a donut or a cinnamon bun that i would get at a hotel or something like that in the morning you know at one of those buffets before my workout there wasn't a big difference they were almost the same thing these health foods like this this whole wheat toast with peanut butter versus a Danish, you know, I'll take the Danish every time. So I experimented with that a little bit, but it got old fast. Um, and, and it only lasted a few months, maybe a year until my tastes truly changed. And I think as soon as your tastes really uh, flip, flip, something else happens physiologically in your body. And like, Fast food doesn't smell good to me. It smells rancid. Uh, Dr. Pepper doesn't taste good to me. It tastes like chemicals. But people who were addicted to Dr. Pepper used to love it, and then they follow the wild out for a few weeks. And after that detox that you were talking about, all of a sudden, it tastes like poison to them. And I think uh, that's where I want people to be. <laughs> that's where I want people to go is uh, be free of that, whatever that is. And I'm not saying I know what it is. Um, I, I don't think people in industry even know what it is, but they know what its effect is. They know that when they put wheat into something, it makes you hungrier and it, it hurts your gut. It does something to you that they want, so you buy more and often you get you get fatter. So for me, uh, the older I get, the more I realize how important defense is. Um, and, and so I see it that way where it's like if you're out on the road, you don't really know who's cooking your food. And, and I've spent like almost all my life on the road in one way or another. Uh, you've got to be careful. It's damage control mode. You are fueling. You know, I've, I've got a, a truck. It takes diesel. If I decide to put gas in it because I'm low, uh, it doesn't work out. And that's kind of how I see it. It's like if sometimes I will will cheat or eat freely I don't call it cheating um, I eat freely from things that are prepared with real food the wild diet way um, and so I eat my fair share I think I ate three cookies last night now they weren't huge they're little cookies that's one of the tricks you know I make and, and Allison makes a ton of things we have little spoons we have little bowls I had it might surprise people to know that one of my biggest treats is cereal and I'll have oats in it, or I'll have quinoa or buckwheat or something like that. And it's usually a little bit sweet, and I put it over my uh, Greek yogurt, or uh, it could be some sort of uh, kefir or kefir or something that's dairy-based. But I basically make myself a sundae, uh, except all of the ingredients in it are, are fresh or real. I know what they are, and uh, I don't feel hungrier after I eat it. If I go out and I try anything, and it makes me hungry then I, I do my best to not eat that. I have a few foods that I like to enjoy. Um, you know, beans, bean chips, right? Popcorn. There are some like salty, crunchy things uh, that, that I enjoy. And I try to stay away from the bad fried oils, GMOs, corn oil, soy, um, a, a lot of other just super low quality stuff. So we almost always bring food on the road and quite a bit of it. And that way, you know, we were on the road for, I think, over 10 days just this past month, and we ate out like three times. So it saves a ton of money. And uh, I also, a lot of times, will lose a little bit of weight, which is awesome, you know, because I was drinking the whole time, too. I was, I was having a great time. And so that's, yeah. that's part of it. It's like I will say if I know that I'm going to enjoy a bit of wine or some gluten-free beer with friends or some vodka or tequila or something like that, I try not to cheat 
with food. I try to eat really clean so that I can have my fun in other ways. So it's important to um, never give up your freedom, right? Don't don't be obsessive about any of this. But, you know, it's kind of like uh, really <laughs> I'm a picky eater because I have super high standards. I, and, you know, people will make fun of you for that. But I'm not the type of person I used to be. You just put anything in front of me and I'll eat it. That's not, you know, there are some dogs like that and there are other ones who sniff it first and find out what it is. And I want to be the second kind. Uh, and, it's, and it's important that you train that skill because we're going to need it. It's going to be harder and harder to tell once they start growing, you know, legs and labs, <laughs> beef legs and labs that start being sold at, at Subway and uh, McDonald's and all these other places. Like that is not far away. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if we're we're already eating a lot of meat that is mislabeled it's not the thing that you think it is so i mean it's wow. it's a messy world you got to practice um a good defense you got to put your shields up when you go outside and have super high standards for what you eat because if like all right yeah. i look at it this way if you're on the road and you have nothing to eat but you do have like a couple of packets of coconut oil or something like that you could literally just have that i'll have a coconut or uh, avocado or just not really eat anything, or I'll put heavy cream in my coffee, and it's it's wonderful. Like you, you're running on clean fuel, and sometimes I think it's okay. Especially the the older that I get, the more I realize how important it is to not overeat. You can do some serious damage, especially if you do it often or regularly. That's when the damage happens when you're when you're redlining from a blood sugar perspective. Um, and, and certainly when you're eating a bunch of toxins, it's like you don't feel good after that. So if you don't feel good um, 10 minutes after you eat, two hours after you eat a day the next morning, then don't eat that the next time if you don't want to feel that way. And uh, so I just get it's not like I get stricter, but I get more precise with the things I choose to enjoy. And, and I trust the world a little bit less. Yeah, absolutely. I like that. What else so, you got? So I put out to our members on our uh, our Facebook members only group. I, I asked, I let them know that I was going to be talking to you today, and if they had any questions. And so I kind of wanted to pitch some of their questions to you and, and get your take on them. We have some pretty serious obstacle course racing athletes here, and so they had some questions about how to fuel specifically for a race. Mm -hmm. um, and they want to know on both ends of the spectrum. So we're doing the world's toughest mudder this year, me and a group of the guys here at the gym. One of the guys wants your opinion on, so how do you fuel, uh, how do you prepare you know, before the race, and then how do you fuel at the race? Do you have any suggestions or tips? And remember, it's 24 hours. Obviously, we're gonna have to be consuming something. Um, yeah. What is your opinion on that, Yeah. Uh, for starters? Well, I'll, I'll start right here. What you want, just in terms of expectations, isn't to be the biggest you've ever been, if it's a race. You want the best power to weight ratio. So leaning down before competition is a great idea. So um, for me, it's like past couple years, I've been around 170, 175. I'm a little bit lower than that right now. But when I was doing marathons, I was like 148. Uh, so that makes you a ton faster if you can if you can drop your body fat or, or um, you know, even drop your muscle mass, but maintain the same strength that's going to give you a huge advantage. So that will mean also that you need to eat a lot less on the course, right? So it's like you can kind of have that wiry old man, I'll run 100 miles strength and stamina. And yeah. that's that's kind of a different type of training. That's what I uh, try to go for because you can, the other side, and I've done this too, is when you're running mile after mile and when you start getting cramps at, at, at mile 16 or you're a little low on energy, you squeeze the, this packet of pure sugar into your mouth that also has a blast of caffeine and a bunch of other things. And you can just like keep on gunning it. But yeah. uh, like in all those race car movies, when you hit the nitrous super hard, you would hit the turbo mode, you're going to blow your engine at some point. It's not good for you. It's doing damage. You might be faster. You probably will be faster. I'll be honest about that. Um, yeah, but it's not worth it. And so you can fuel with with all those sugars and all that stuff that's marketed to you. Um, but I would say, OK, so first you want to be hydrated. That's the thing that kills most people is is not being hungry, but being dehydrated because uh, how long are, are most of the races? 
So the one that we're talking about specifically, this one's a 24 hour. We're going 24 we're hour. Go, yeah, we're trying to go as far as we can in 24 hours. Yeah. Uh, I wrote a, a blog post about when I did my Krav Maga belt test. And I think that wound up being like seven or eight hours long. And this was a couple years ago. And I talked about it a little bit on the podcast. But just search uh, Krav with a K Maga on fatburningman.com. It should come right up. Okay. Uh, but that has what I ate that day. And some of the you know supplements that I experimented with and other things like that. But I'll say you want to hydrate first. Think about that first. Uh, I take trace minerals. There are some that you can just pour into filtered water. It makes it taste a lot better. Um, but it also, if, if you imagine drinking from a spring where it's been filtering through rock for a long time. But like our water should have minerals in it. And it's been stripped from, from most of it. And there are also, there's a lot of nutrition and electrolytes. In that too, so you can get the pills that are basically trace mineral electrolytes, but you want to focus on magnesium, sodium, potassium. You, you have to keep all of that in balance, or else you're going to feel off. And then from a sugar perspective, if you're not eating much sugar, uh, then you shouldn't need a ton, but it'll help. Uh, sugars and starch, like I'll always go for sweet potatoes um, okay. the day of, maybe the day before, but they'll also fill you up fast. So you might, for, for most people or for some people, they'll fill you up faster than like white rice or, uh, or oats, brown rice, quinoa, things like that. If, if you feel like you need the carbs, then that's a great option. And also if you're going for 24 hours, you don't want the fiber either. So instead of having greens, um, maybe a green juice would be great. I use that as a recovery drink a lot of the time. Um, okay. Running on, on – obviously, you don't want big things in your stomach. So normally, I would say fruit um, and vegetables and fiber are, are a great thing to have because most people are sedentary. But if you're rocking out for 24 hours, it's all about like getting quick access to that fuel. So okay. you can dispose of a lot more, more sugar than you otherwise would. So having something that's like a, a veggie fruit juice cocktail or something like that to give you some quick – um, energy might help, but you don't want to load up on fructose. You can overthink anything. It's just like you'll pretty much eat the same way. You'll want to have even higher standards for what you eat because if you eat, if, if you're out there and you're eating pizza and Snickers and what have you, you're going to be inflamed and that's going to make you slower and more likely to get injured. So eat super clean and, and fuel up as much as you can. I, I always, when I'm going hiking or on something that's pretty grueling, take uh, packets of instead of sugary goo, I'll take um, like coconut oil, coconut mana. The coconut, um, uh, it has another name to it, but it's basically just pulverized coconut that tastes so good and it's got a little bit of sugar in it but not too much so it's, it's nice and sweet super filling it's like i want to say 200 calories and you can just kind of suck it right down um, but it'll fill you up for almost a whole meal when you're on the road so it, little packets of nut butter things like that uh, or if you want sugar like jam or whatever i would just honey you know isn't bad some of some of those sugary ones are starting to get more natural just stay away from the ones that are obviously bad for you um, that are advertised on television basically don't eat anything that's advertised on television is another great rule to follow <laughs> i like that so so from a digestion standpoint though that's kind of one of the things that i think the guys are kind of yeah uh, uh nervous about. so from a digestion standpoint you mentioned stay away from fiber is that your yeah. biggest thing to stay away from. I mean, the other stuff is obvious, the packaged junk, nothing on TV. I get that. Mm -hmm. But like even obviously there's choices that we can make that would not be uh, optimal, even though they're wild. Yeah. So fiber is probably yeah. the biggest one. Well, um, you don't have to completely avoid fiber, but you don't want to have a full belly, right? Because you're going to okay. be full of nerves yeah. too. Like yeah. you, yeah. you're not hungry in the same way when you're really pushing yourself. Um, you you eat more for energy, um, not for like you won't want a salad. You you might want a banana though. Like you'll be surprised by the things that you crave. Bananas are awesome. Bananas and and nut butter. That's like a high energy food that also has some potassium in it. Um, sweet potatoes, avocados is a nice one because those are all they're like rich in something. It could be that sugary type energy, but uh, it also has quite a bit of fat too. And so if you're 
mostly fat adapted and you're not redlining for 24 hours, which you just can't anyway. You're going to be burning fat most of the time and you'll want some sugar to replace it, the extra energy that you use when you do those hill sprints or when you go up over something that's really hard or when you do a, um, something that, that, that's very fast. But for the most part, you just want to keep on chugging and, and eat the way that you normally do minus the fibrous yeah. stuff. Um, oats, oats are okay. I like oats when, uh, when I'm racing too. It, it seems to work pretty well for me. Not, not everyone though. Some people who, you know, everyone tolerates carbs a little bit differently. But if you're running for 24 hours, then you can definitely have some. Okay. All right. Yeah, I like that. So um, here was another question that we got that was not necessarily uh, race related or anything like that as far as sports yeah. go. But so they had mentioned that they didn't notice um, any sort of uh, issues or gluten intolerance before the wild diet. Right. But after they did the wild diet pretty hardcore for 30, 60, 90 days, and then when they got, you know, put some gluten back in their system, they started having some issues. So what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> a lot of people blame me for that in a joking yeah. way. Yeah. Uh, but the I've asked a few doctors on my show that that question, what, what do you think is happening? And the way that I see it, and this is kind of an oversimplification as always, is your body is uh, damaged by hyperpalatable foods, by chemicals, by, by wheat and gluten and various things uh, from the inside out. And so your intestines, the way that you absorb food, if they've been blasted with processed food for a while, they're the, basically the, the tips of some of the um, biological machinery that we have gets sheared off, gets damaged, and it, it opens up um, your blood to having foreign substances in it too and then it's it's a whole disaster now when you start to heal that when you stay away from uh not just the 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 gluten in modern wheat and the gliadin but also the dough conditioners and the aluminum and the other weird stuff and the and the bleach that they put on it when they when they treat the flour um you take those things away you take away uh msg monosodium glutamate which is a excitotoxin and basically neurotoxic to your brain all of a sudden your brain works a little bit differently when it's not blasted with all that stuff you have a brain in your gut also that's affected something changes like i said dr pepper doesn't taste good anymore right like uh rancid oils at the fair or uh just by a fast food place or at a truck stop it makes me feel a little nauseous like not appetizing that's not what you want. So some healing is happening. You're, the way I see it is you're going to a place of higher sensitivity. You can taste more. Uh, and I think that's because you're avoiding things that are super hyper palatable. You're avoiding that hyper stimulus, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. Um, so then let me ask you this, because I think <laughs> this, is what, this, is, this is what I get asked a lot. So when you talk about it doesn't taste good anymore. So I'm going to ask you, Abel. So Abel, at the fair, a uh, whatever your favorite fair food used to be. So you can you can say you would taste that, and it's it's not something that would excite you anymore. Like you, you know, because that's what the food does, right? It's like yeah. Bacon, oh, it's meant. It's built for it, thing, right? It's built so, for it. Well, uh, you know. My favorite fair food was always the Italian sausages that they were frying up with those onions. Okay. Oh, man. With mustard, that stone yeah. ground mustard. That was always my favorite. Um, but then, of course, there's the fried dough. And we would have fried dough like every year. Um, yeah. And this is up in the, the Northeast. I know that there are funnel cakes and all sorts of, you know, basically the same thing. But it's any fried dough. It's also pizza. <laughs> it's also most of the food that we eat today. It's it's Subway, too. Um I haven't had something like fried dough in, I don't know, if I go to other countries, I might have a bite of whatever their fried dough is, right? Or I might I might try a little bit of that thing if I'm in Asia or whatever. I, it's not like I avoid all fried food always. Um, I might try a little bit of it. But, uh, you know, I have had my, the way that I see it now is like I have had my fair share of almost every food there is. It's not like there's there's fried dough that I haven't tried. It's like, but this guy has the best fried dough. It's like, come on. 
<laughs> right? Like, you have never tried French fries like this. Yes, I have. <laughs> you know? <laughs> At some point, you're just like, the box is checked, and now I'm much more interested in not ruining myself. I'm much more interested in not ruining my palate. Um, or, you know, it's like, I remember the way I felt after going to the fair, too. I remember the way I felt when uh, we didn't have much money growing up, and so we didn't hardly ever eat out. And one of my first times eating out, I think when I was around like seven or eight years old, we went to this greasy diner, named George's Diner. And uh, I ate a bunch of greasy breakfast sausage, I think, and some hash browns and all this other stuff. It was great. I was just going ham. I was going hog wild. And I barfed immediately, you know, wow. because all that food, all that grease, my body was used to eating the foods that my mom was preparing for me at home. And uh, so just don't forget that, you know, your body is still the same as it was then. That's the same thing as a cheat day. <laughs> you know, Don't get ahead of yourself. Don't believe that you're you're different from everyone else and the rules don't apply to you because they apply to everyone. And uh, and sometimes it smacks you in the face. So uh, it's, it's always best to practice, like you said, discipline um, yeah. during your your everyday life. And uh, that will really help. I'm, I'm coming up on time. Uh, do you want to end with one more question or, or what else you got? Yeah, I think that was, I mean, I think that, I think that wraps it up. Sweet, man. Yeah. Kenny, you know, it's, it's been fantastic talking to you. And uh, I think a lot of people can learn from your journey because what I want people to take away is, is not just that uh, the wild diet as a, as a concept or, or as a lifestyle uh, right. works for health. This is, Hopefully, there, there, there's a lot of messaging in what I try to tell people that this is this is your life. Practice freedom because there are a lot of people, especially marketers, who are trying to take it away from you, and they're trying to take away your own uh, free thought. You know, when you cloud everyone's mind with all this misinformation uh, in health and fitness or otherwise, it does. It, it's, it's just so disheartening for someone like me who has a lot of the answers and has said them so many times and has uh, put them out there. And not that I have all the answers, but just like sufficient answers that could help a lot of people from a health and fitness perspective. Um, but there is so much more there. Once you put that into action, like you said, you it, it's like you get more energy. You get a second wind. You... Uh, you start practicing freedom in other areas of your life, and all of a sudden, you don't just have your own gym. You're you're building a new one and starting up these five other ones, and uh, also in the, probably in, in some of the best shape of your life. And that's how I feel. It's like you start checking these other boxes instead of eating fried dough. It's like no, I got a six pack like seven years ago or eight years ago or something like that. I don't really care, um, but. I don't want to get less fit than I am now. I'd like to keep that and keep developing these other skills, build other businesses, right? Like that's the thing that's really exciting. That's what you're doing now. And I can't wait to see what you do next. So um, thank you so much for coming on, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It was fun. Hey, this is Abel and I have a quick question for you. Do you want to get in the best shape of your life without giving up your favorite foods? Don't miss your opportunity to get the new Fat-Burning Chef e-cookbook featuring more than 200 delicious recipes from the top paleo chefs in the world. You can get it now for a huge discount at fatburningchef.com. You can type it in from any device. Keep on listening for the details. Meet Jane. Jane knows she's supposed to eat right, but it's been one heck of a long day and she's short on time to cook a healthy, delicious dinner. Jane knows she can get lean by choking down reheated chicken breast and steamed broccoli six times a day for the next three months, but that doesn't sound like very much fun. Fortunately, Jane's in luck because her friend just sent her a collection of over 150 quick and easy recipes that just so happen to keep the pounds off. It's called the Fat Burning Chef. And through the magic of the interwebs, this handy, interactive, digital cookbook beams straight to you instantly. And since it lives on your iPhone, iPad, Droid, computer, or other gizmo, you'll never be without quick and easy fat-burning meals. But it's not just about mouth-watering recipes. We want to change the world with real food. When you grab the Fat-Burning Chef, you get another copy as a free gift to share with your friends and family. So if you're short on time and want to know what's for dinner tonight, head on over to fatburningchef.com and we'll fix you right up. Bon appetit, Jane.
Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Fat Burning Man. If you liked it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, the podcast app, or wherever else you might be listening to or watching this show. Got a second? Please leave me a quick review on iTunes. I always love hearing from you, and if you think someone else might like and benefit from this free show, please take a second to share it with a friend or with a family member. You can get in touch with me on Twitter at FatBurnMan and Facebook by typing in Abel James or Fat Burning Man. Drop me a line anytime. Did you know that I've recorded over 150 episodes of Fat Burning Man, winning four awards in independent media and hitting number one in more than eight countries? And here's some more good news. You can download and listen to every single episode for free. All you have to do is type in fatburningman.com. I'll give you a second to type it in, fatburningman.com. And you'll get all the show notes in video and audio versions for all the past episodes of Fat Burning Man. Better yet, enter your best email at fatburningman.com, sign up for my newsletter, and I'll even send you a quick start guide to start burning fat right now and a few of our ridiculously tasty recipes as a special thanks for signing up. Once again, just go to fatburningman.com right now, enter your best email to get your free fat burning download straight to your inbox and make sure that you never miss a show again. This is Abel James signing off. Thanks so much for listening and have a great week.